today's video what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to test your coolant temperature sensor. Now if you've got a Volkswagen Golf you'll know this can be the cause of many problems. I'm going to actually start writing a blog on this sort of stuff actually. But um, it's very difficult to tell whether these are working or not. I mean there's a lot of faults that actually stem from these given problems. I mean this runs your turbo, this runs your obviously the whole engine management. These are the eyes and ears of your car. So um, it's important to know that this is working properly. Now what they call this is a thermistor. Basically what happens is it's a resistor that reacts under heat. So in a, it, this particular uh, thermistor, um, what happens is, is as it gets warm, it allows the energy to run, it allows the electricity to run easily through the circuit. So, um, that's how this one works. I mean, they're all virtually roughly the same sort of things. I can go into more detail on it, but maybe another time. So basically, what we're gonna be um, checking on this particular thermostat, or this, this, this coolant sensor, is um, the resistance coming from this. How much resistance is this giving? Now, um, the specification of it, the specification of the resistance of this particular item is when it's cold, it should be between one and a half thousand and two thousand five hundred ohms. One and a half to two and a half thousand ohms of resistance. That's what it should be when it's cold. And when it's warm, it should be between three seven five and two seven five ohms. Um, so yeah, so that's that's that's. I mean, that's just technical stuff. But basically, that's. I'm just trying to tell you what we're looking for. So. If you can see in here, I hope you can see it, you have got four pins. Yep, yeah, you can see four pins. Now, the one, what's in this particular thermistor is um, two, there's two thermostats, there's two, there's two thermostats in here, or there's two readings that gets taken from this thermostat. Now, the one on the rounded edge, this is for your car, this is for your engine ECU. The one for the rounded edge is for your engine ECU. The one on the more flatter side, that's for your gauge in inside your car. So this is how you can get a scenario where your gauge reads something totally different to what your engine is reading. So this one's got two in it. They don't all have that, but this particular one does. So now our job is to work out the resistance in this to make sure they were within specification. So remember we said it should be, when it's cold, it should be between two and a half thousand and one and a half thousand um, um, ohms when cold. And when hot, it should be between 375 and 275. So we're just gonna test if this is working within those perimeters. Okay. The next thing you're gonna need is some sort of leads. Some sort of, these are just DIY broken leads. I just, I just made these up. Now, to be honest, because I've always got these cars and I always get parts for these cars, I actually took it out of a plug that I had lying around, something like this. So I took them out and now I have got, can you see, two little clips in there on some wires. So it's really easy, that's not difficult stuff. Once you've got that, what you, once you've got that, um, once you've made that, oh yeah, sorry, I've also insulated it so that it doesn't touch each other when it goes inside because that would give us a false reading. So let's get on to the next step and show you what else you need. You'd also need two, two sort of jars. Um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put hot water and cold water in there to make sure it's working within those um, perimeters. So you also need this also. And you're going to need a voltage meter. So let's just get to doing this now. now. Now, like I said before, you've got your resistor here. You need to make put your two wires towards the rounded side of this particular connector. You'd have to find out on your own one. Um, but if it's this style, if it's a green style one, then this is where you've got to put it onto the round side. You've got to look at your wiring diagram. So what you do is you get your connectors and we put them on. That's a nice fit because of the way they're made, so you get a really good fit with this one. But um, I'm sure you could use something else. So now we've got these wires on and attached to the two points. So now what we've got to do is, is 
hook them up to our multimeter. Now when we're using the multimeter, we are putting it on the 20,000 ohms because if you put it on 2000, it could go above it and then just read one like it's reading here and you would not get no reading. So we're putting it to 20,000 ohms reading. Um, yeah, and that's it. So once we've done that, we check our terminals for resistance. You can see there was a slight reading there, but then it went to zero. And then we put, I don't think it really matters any order, we put one here on this wire. I'm using a clip, you could use anything you want. Use one on that wire. And we use one on that wire. Now, because of the uh, reading wave we're showing, that's actually 1,700 ohms, but it shows us 1.7 because the, we're counting in thousands, so to speak. So that is within the perimeter. So if we just put it in a cold one here, you see it drop because as it gets colder, this uh, the resistance in this becomes harder to go through. So. That's why you see it dropping there at the moment, you see? So bearing in mind the perimeters is 1,500 to 2,500. So at the moment, the cold side of this is working perfectly. So now, this is our kettle and our hot water. So let's just pour that in there. Now, we're looking for this to drop between the 375 ohms and the 275 ohms. Um, so what I'm going to do now is when it goes below the, the thousandth reading, I'm going to switch it to, to, to 2000 ohms readings because that will give me the, the nominal figures that it works. So we'll go we'll put it in here, put in hot water, and you can see it dropping already. See? So now we're getting down to the hundreds. Oh, it's still, it will show, it will show. So this is 610, 500, because they're not showing the last decimal, they're just doing it in thousandth. There you go. So we'll switch over so you can see it in actual ohms. So you see it falling. Now this is boiling hot water, this is above what it would expect it to be working in because it shouldn't be getting this high, it should have cooled it down if it was in the actual cooling system itself. So we're just trying to find out if it's working within perimeters and you can see it's actually struggling getting to the 375. So maybe this isn't working as well as it should be and could really do with changing it in all honesty because it is struggling. Your fan wouldn't come on until it drops within its range so as you can see here, it's actually stopped. And this could cause your car to overheat. This could cause um, engine codes. This could cause quite a lot of things. So it's important that this is working. At, at, this is working properly. So you see it. So it looks like here we've got a faulty temperature sensor and it could do with changing. So that's how you would check if your sensor is working correctly or not. Now one other thing I would say is do not buy the cheap eBay copy ones. They come like this, no signal, no ceiling. They are of inferior quality. Don't buy them. Instead, buy a genuine VW item which has all the uh, part numbers on the side and these are much better, especially, especially for your car because they cause so much problems. So um, yeah. That's how you work out a sensor. That's how you test a sensor. Hope that helps. Comment, rate, subscribe. Thanks for watching.